There are two parts to this story. Let us begin with energy and humans' dependence on it. Earth is where we set our stage. From the time that man discovered fire, humans' reliance on energy grew at a steady pace, up until the Industrial Revolution, that is. It was at this point that the dependence on energy grew exponentially. Fast forward to 1997 in Australia, and at this point globally, humans are aware of their codependence on energy and the adverse impacts of carbon emissions from burning fossil fuels and greenhouse gases. And those fossil fuels that we're so reliant on? Guess what? With 7 billion people now occupying the stage, they were also starting to run out of it. Humans needed to reduce emissions, but also fulfill the energy needs of the planet and make them renewable. So they wrote a list. Keep producing energy to satisfy the needs of everyone while reducing the need. How do we do this? Maybe producing products that need less energy. We'll work on that. Next, investigate renewable energy. We'll look into it. And lastly, reduce carbon emissions. Perhaps if we look, look into the first two dot points on this list, these will help to reduce the emissions. But in the meantime, humans know fossil fuels. So there is there one that produces less carbon emissions and reduces the carbon footprint? Yes, there is. It's called coal seam gas, the cleaner fossil fuel. Chemically, conventional natural gas and coal seam gas are similar, but coal seam gas has a higher percentage of methane. Humans discovered that coal seam gas produces 30 to 60 percent less emissions compared to coal fired power, and electricity generated from it produces 30 to 50 percent less carbon emissions than brown and black coal. So in 1997, Australia included coal seam gas as part of their energy mix. Coal seam gas mining increased, wells were mined, and exploration for new mining prospects began mainly along the eastern Australian states, with hotspots across the Darling Downs in southern Queensland, which is also a rich agricultural landscape. So how is coal seam gas produced? Coal seam gas is found in coal seams 300 to 1,000 metres below ground and is formed as, as part of the calcification process, the process of plant matter becoming coal. During this process, methane is generated and held in place by underground water. Australian Atlas of Minerals resources and processing describe this as that coal acting as a source and reservoir for the methane gas while the water is the seal. To get the coal seam gas out, wells are drilled into coal seams and the water pumped out. This water is known as formation water. By removing the water it releases the gas into the well ready for consumption. Sometimes the wells intersect with permeable coal seams and to release the flow of gas, hydraulic fracturing or fracking needs to occur. Fracking involves injecting fluid made up of water and chemical additives to create fractures into the coal seam to increase coal seam gas production. Fracking is widely used but only practiced in approximately 20 to 40 percent of coal seam gas wells. So this is all positive, right? Less emissions, power needs still being satisfied, and according to research conducted, <clears throat> coal seam gas wells in the Darling Downs are anticipated to deliver $6 billion in state revenue for Queensland, $9 billion in exports over the next 25 years, and is expected to create over 6,000 jobs. And that's just in the Darling Downs. According to Queensland, across Queensland, $65 billion in investment, $850 million in state royalties and taxes, and create over 18,000 jobs. This is great. Humans, in particular the government and mining companies, are also making a lot of money and creating a lot of jobs. Solution found. Or maybe not. We know from Barry Commoner's Four Laws of Ecology that everything is connected to everything else and there is no such thing as a free lunch. This begins the second part of the story. For each mine, a large area must be cleared to allow for infrastructure for each borehole so it can house things such as drilling rigs, sheds, vehicles and finally testing and monitoring equipment. This results in damage to the immediate ecosystem <clears throat> as well as taking away agricultural land and affecting farmers ability, ability to effectively farm. The depletion of the aquifers where the underground water lives also significantly impacts the area potentially crippling the local ecological system, causing irreversible damage. This means that each coal seam gas well could potentially devastate entire ecosystems, with the underground water flow potentially taking decades to impact streams and waterways. 
humans' health and environmental impacts are unlikely to be known in the short term. Whilst the Australian government has imposed ongoing water monitoring, there isn't a clear understanding of the health and environmental impacts of these mines. The most concerning of the problems is the potential risk of water contamination and chemical toxicity. The water that is pumped out must go somewhere, and the real concern is the water that is used for fracking, as it contains toxic chemical additives. If spilled or leaked, these chemicals may con contaminate aquifers or catchment areas used for drinking water. Steps by the government to introduce legislation to protect water from coal seam gas mines in Australia are extensive. Companies are required to replenish water streams that could affect landowner activities such as farming. However, this does not take into consideration the depletion of water resources for wildlife or even the impacts to streams and waterways. Companies must also rectify any impacts to underground water quality. Whilst the government has banned the use of certain chemicals, residuals of other toxins in the water remain. And then there's the issue of leaking wells. The gas that ca can leak from wells are called fugitive gases. The issue that arises from fugitive gases is that coal seam gas in its original form is made up predominantly of methane gas, 95 to 98% in fact. CSIRO researchers conducted a survey of 43 coal seam gas wells in New South Wales and Queensland, and of the 43 wells, only six were actually not leaking. Yes, only six. The researchers say that the wells in most cases are leaking three grams of methane per minute, equivalent to the methane emissions from around 30 cows. Well, 30 cows doesn't seem like much, right? But giving Given that the numbers of wells tested makes up less than 1% of the Australian wells, if you do the math, that's potentially a lot of gas. Methane is, known, is a known greenhouse gas, and the question is, are the savings and emissions that are being made by coal seam gas cancelled out by these fugitive, emiss, uh, fugitive gases? The answer right now is, we are just not sure. Humans may have found a cleaner source of energy, but exactly how clean is it? And is the overall environmental impact of the mining process worth this clean energy? The important thing that needs to happen is a clear legislative framework supported by effective, transparent reporting and compliance systems that regularly review the ecological impact. The use of new technologies and innovation should also be high on the agenda. Finally, comprehensive monitoring of coal seam gas operations and ongoing examination of information should be collected to, be, to better understand the impact of hydrogeology and the possible effects of the population and environment as a whole. Alternative renewable energy sources should be investigated, such as biomass, wind, solar, geothermal and hydroelectric energy. What is abundantly clear is there's still a lot of work to do in to do to really determine whether a coal seam gas as a whole has less carbon emissions. This work needs to involve all stakeholders, government, mining companies, the local community and the farmers that occupy the land. More importantly, is the devastating effects of the mining process really worth all those reduced emissions? Humans just don't know yet, and until more research is conducted, they won't have a comprehensive understanding into what it is actually doing to the planet. So this particular story of coal seam gas comes to an end. However, this coal seam gas story continues and will continue, continue until humans gain understanding into what impact coal seam gas is making for future generations.